Hi everybody, this is Jeff from Rick Robotics, and I've got a different sort of video for you all today. What you're seeing here is a 70-year-old robotic dog named Toddy. There is a lot of mystery to this interesting creation, so I'm going to cover what I found through research, as well as the curiosities that still linger about this amazing mystery of robotic science. I first became aware of Toddy while watching the bonus material in the iRobot DVD 2004 distribution, which is also the only actual video footage of Toddy I've been able to find so far. In this footage, the current owner, Daniel Dennett, a professor of philosophy at Tufts University, says that he found this in an antique shop in Paris. He says he named it Toddy in order of Jacques Tade, whose classic film Mon Encla depicts a similar use of this technology. Since he acquired it, he's began trying to find its origins, originally considering that it may have been the creation of a French roboticist named Albert Ducroix, but later determined that it wasn't one of his works. He spent a lot of time trying to reverse engineer Toddy and figure out how it works. To my knowledge, it's not functional, but may have been at one time. It was built sometime in the 1950s. One theory as to its origin is that it was commissioned by Prince Louis de Broglie, a physicist and Nobel laureate, for his granddaughter in Paris, and that she was forced to sell it to an antique dealer when she fell on hard times. This hasn't been verified, but it at least puts an interesting sentiment into the creation and motivation for the creation of Toddy. We can see that a lot of thought was put into engineering of this robot. In my opinion, this wasn't the creator's first attempt at building something like this, or at least what we see here is a revision of an earlier model. I suggest this is because of the detailed organization of the parts, the use of space, and the lack of telltale modifications that would normally be seen on a prototype or first draft. Things like empty screw holes, metal that has been bent several times, and misshaped parts and wires are all absent here, which indicates that this piece was either cleaned up in its final hours of assembly, or that it is the final draft of a series of previous versions. In any case, Toddy is the only version known to exist, so if this is the first or fiftieth attempt, it is very possible that this is the only one left today. While Toddy doesn't seem to function, we can still understand some of the concepts used in its engineering. Let's start with Toddy's head, which is the most complex area of the robot. It has various devices and sensors to allow it navigation. Its head has a spring antenna and is probably a bump sensor. It has four sets of contacts in its head, surrounded by a dark red ball mounted on the end of the spring. This could either be for collision detection or possibly a joystick for manual control. The white taped rod is a carrying handle, while the diagonal rod is used for steering. You can see the worm gear mechanism that moves the eyes as well, driven by a small red motor. The spent rod near the base is used to change the pitch of the head. There is also a rather mysterious crank rod in the middle of the body whose function is still unclear. There are an additional three sets of contacts mounted in the nose. The function of these contacts is a bit mysterious but may have been the base of an additional sensor. The lower contacts are wrapped with a fine element type of wire, which is possibly a thermostat. It has fans that blow over the relays in the face, which may assist in cooling the relays in the head. This whole system was probably developed to keep the electronics to a reasonable temperature. The head has motors that move the eyes and jaw, as well as a gear-driven system to control the head, which can move about 30 degrees from the left to right. Toddy's body also has an array of five light sensors, which you can see look like aluminum cups. These are selenium cells, which react to light. These could have been used to either steer Toddy with a flashlight or perhaps to guide it naturally to the most well-lit area of a room. There is also a mercury switch underneath the chassis, which may be a tilt sensor or even serve a completely different purpose. 
Its drivetrain consists of a wiper motor to power the drive wheel and a steering motor, leaving the two side wheels for stability and are thus unpowered. However, one side is fitted with a rotary encoder that probably helps measuring the distance Toddy travels. Only one small battery is visible, which most likely powers the sensors, lights, and relay. There may be another larger battery in the rear of the robot, which we can't clearly see in the pictures. Toddy's logic control system uses a series of flip switches and GE2N107 transistors seen here. These transistors came out in the 1955 era. If we look to the upper right of this blue coil here, we can see an oval shaped relay that opens and closes and is turned by a cam mechanism. We're still unsure of what function this device serves. Toddy is such an amazing creation. Even though it's over 70 years old, it's still a brilliantly engineered robot. It's surrounded in mystery and whimsy, and to this day, we still don't know exactly how everything works or even who is the mastermind behind this early cybernetic dog. There are various forums displaying this piece, many of which I myself use to collect my research, since I have no physical access to Toddy. There is even a financial reward being offered to anyone who can successfully identify the original creator of this process. I'm leaving links in the description to all of my sources, including the reward link. If you have any information you'd like to share about Toddy, or if I've made an error in my video somewhere, please let me know by leaving me a comment. If you like this video, please click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like to support my channel, please check out my Patreon campaign. Your contributions help me to make more videos like this to share with my fellow robot enthusiasts like you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.